Imagine being caught in a downpour, but without an umbrella. And each drop of rain is an Instagram post, a video, an email, an advert, a news story. It's this relentless overload of information and content. And this downpour is drowning out our own thoughts, our own intuition, our values, our authenticity, our self-trust, our unique personality. It's becoming harder and harder to tune into those things and to be in the driving seat of our life rather than having that overload of digital noise steering and directing us. So let's talk about this and work out how we can start navigating this overwhelm of information, how we can return back to our true selves and our intuition and how we can live with more intention and authenticity in the digital age. And if we haven't met, hi, I'm Lucy, and I'm here to help you live by design, not distraction. So at the risk of overusing metaphors in this video, it's like we're in a crowded room where everyone is shouting and we can no longer hear our own thoughts. We're completely overstimulated and oversaturated. And our minds are so crammed full with information and noise that we're kind of running out of mental space to process it all. And as a result, our own voice and our own thoughts kind of get pushed out by all the other stuff that's going on in our brain. So we end up feeling disconnected from ourselves. And before we know it, we'll find ourselves living a life that isn't quite aligned with our true selves and instead is being dictated by voices outside of ourselves. But here's the thing, if you're wanting to live a life that feels fulfilling and beautiful and authentic, you need to tune back in to your true self. You need to reconnect with the real you. And to do that, you've got to turn down the volume on that overstimulating noise, because otherwise your inner voice and your intuition get lost and you can't hear them anymore. Your vision for life should be about what you want, not what everyone else around you and online is telling you that you should want. Look, social media, advertising, TV, news, all of these things bombard us with opinions and information. We're told what we should do, what we should have, how we should live, and even how we should think. It's all designed very cleverly to keep us reaching outside of ourselves for answers and permission rather than simply looking inward and tapping in to our own intuition. Because if we did that too often, a lot of these things would go out of business, right? When I was spending a lot of time online and on social media in my mid to late 20s, I started morphing into someone that wasn't really me and someone who depended on other people's approval before I checked in with myself to decide my own opinions, my own feelings, my own tastes, my own emotions, but it was subtle. It wasn't like I really realized it was happening, but I certainly felt very disconnected from myself and I couldn't really put my finger on why. Part of it was this very subtle but toxic side of social media where we feel like we have to be this perfect human. We're exposed to the highlight reels of other people's lives and Let's face it, we're addicted to people telling us how to do things rather than following through on what we already know. As Africa Brooke says, social media has created this collective obsession with the perfect human who gets it right all the time. Social media doesn't give us the room to be imperfect or to make a mistake or to say the wrong thing. So we anesthetize That's a hard word to say. So we anesthetize ourselves accordingly because we try instead to fit in a box that's deemed correct or acceptable or attractive. And as creatives and artists and business owners, it's really easy to let all of this stifle our creativity too. When we start second guessing what we should write, post, share, we push our innate intuitive creativeness to the side and it gets trampled on by essentially the expectations of the algorithm and catering to the online noise rather than our 
innate humanness, if that makes sense. And that really breaks my heart. Social media has this way of making us think, talk and behave like everyone else. And we risk losing ourselves in the process. We disconnect from our unique gifts and perspectives. Perhaps we don't think they're good enough or they don't quite fit in with what everyone else is doing. So we lose our originality. We start to ignore our instincts and we kind of doubt our intuition. We stop listening to our own values and what's truly important to us. And doesn't that all just sound a bit boring and one dimensional? But that's what's happened. And it's been so subtle, we just haven't really realized that it's been happening. So I spent almost a year off social media recently and I tuned back into me. What lifestyle did I want? What are my values? What clothes do I like? Without being told what clothes I should like. What are my priorities? What are my own opinions on things before looking at everyone else's opinion and before allowing other people's voices to influence my own? I started tuning in to my authentic voice and I also started thinking what is actually right for me. I realized that social media had been drowning out those quiet, small whispers of my intuition. And now I am back on social media, but it's through a very different lens and in a much more limited capacity. I don't spend half as much time as I used to on there. And it's now rooted in intention and clarity of who I am. I trust my own instincts about things instead of seeking that external validation most of the time. And it's become a lot more enjoyable for me now and a lot more freeing. Am I perfect? Absolutely not. I'm a messy, imperfect human, but that's what being human is all about, right? We need to shed this need to be perfect all the time. And changing our relationship with social media is a huge part of that. And this isn't to say stop looking at social media completely and stop looking at inspiration, but you need to become more discerning and to disconnect more often so that you can reconnect to your true self and your uniqueness. Put simply, we need to reduce the noise. We need to create quiet spaces in our life to tune back in with our inner voice and to listen to our inner voice. You know when you have your best ideas in the shower, there's a reason for that. You haven't got any external noise coming at you and suppressing your internal voice and your emotions and your intuition. And deep down, we know that we need to give ourselves that opportunity to disconnect more often. But do we do it? No. If we find ourselves with 10 minutes to spare, for example, instead of just sitting and pondering and tuning into our own thoughts and voice, we scroll our phones or we turn on the TV. Thomas Edison said, when you become quiet, it just dawns on you. But we're not giving ourselves that chance to become quiet. Therefore, things don't dawn on us. So we continue stuffing our brains with information and knowledge in the hope it will give us some clarity in some way. But what I've learned is that this approach does not work. The approach that's needed is to step back from everyone else's voices and to tune into your own. Anyway, I'm risking turning this into a bit of a ramble. Perhaps I need to do another video, but it's just very much been on my mind recently. So let's get back to it. I'm going to share four ways that you can start reconnecting to your authentic self. First, you could try this journaling technique, which is what I call stream of consciousness. You kind of channel your subconscious mind onto the page without any judgment or criticism. You just let yourself write down any stream of thought as a way to release your true inner voice and reveal things that you might be unintentionally hiding or 
suppressing. That act of creating, whether that's through writing or any other kinds of art, but that creation process can often bypass our logical mind and allow our intuitive insights to flow much more easily. It's simply a way to connect you back to your authentic self and your authentic voice. The second one is meditation. You need to get comfortable with stillness and silence and being able to really settle into the present moment, whether that's through breathing, doing a body scan or tuning into your senses. Even if it's just for five minutes, you need to learn to kind of become friends with yourself and actually start listening to yourself without constantly needing to be distracted or entertained or validated by scrolling on your phone. So start with just five minutes a day, disconnect from technology and reconnect to your thoughts and your intuition. The next one is to stop checking your phone in the morning. When you wake up and need some inspiration, instead of scrolling social media and flooding your brain full of noise, you can connect inwards and start your day with a much healthier and aligned and much more you mindset, which is a really strong way to then carry out the rest of your day. And the fourth tip that I have for you is to reconnect to nature. Being outside can really quiet the mind and allow your intuition to surface. It gives you perspective and it gives you the space, literally, to think, to ponder, to admire the beauty of the world. And it can also function as a meditation. You could do a walking meditation or a sound meditation and really tune back in with your own body and your own self. And I actually chatted all about this in my video last week. And I shared lots of tips to help you get out into nature more and to reconnect to yourself. So if you wanna check that out, I'll put the link just up here and I hope you find value in it. So if we can start quieting the noise, we might just be able to start living life in a way that feels more authentic, that feels more connected to us and that aligns with our true values and our true aspirations. And it's also about being able to navigate the digital world in a way that supports us rather than steering us, right? It's about becoming more discerning about how we're consuming media and content. So I'd like to leave you with this thought from Alan Alder. At times, you have to leave the city of your comfort and go into the wilderness of your intuition. What you'll discover will be wonderful. What you'll discover is yourself. So I'd love to know your thoughts and experiences around this topic in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video if you found it valuable. I'll see you next week.